Hi, this is Jean Shambly Thomas, and welcome so much to Passing the Torch. Um, we're going to do a little something different today. I hope that you've been joining us in the teachings. There's some great teachings we've got. Uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, um, How Do I Know When God's Talking to Me? Um, then there's another little mini-series after that um, about the gifts of the Spirit living in the book of Acts. Exciting stuff! And I hope that you'll go back and take time to learn that. Um, I want to do a little something different today. Um, I don't even know what to call this. I just want to call it maybe a few minutes with God. I really want to look at the character of God. So why don't we pray for a second first, and then we'll get started, and we'll see where we go with it. Father, we come to you today in Jesus' name, and we are here together seeking you out. Lord, we are hungry for more of you. We are hungry to understand you and to know your word. Lord, we don't want to take somebody else's word for it. We don't want to get our information from the movies, from television, from things that have been said, hearsay. We want to look at your word and get to know you through your word. It's concrete that way. Help us, Lord, and guide us into all truth by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, the Word of God is awesome. And I've been reading it, uh, really surrender my life to God in 1980. And I can read the scriptures that I've been reading for 36 years, and they still come alive. And I'll see things that I've never seen before, because that is the very nature of the Word of God. It's living word. It's not just words. Jesus said, basically, he is the word made flesh and dwelt among us. John chapter 1, verse 1, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So you can't separate Jesus Christ, who he is, from his words. And there's a lot of people out there trying to do that nowadays. Okay, they'll pull out a little here and a little there and they'll make it say this or they'll make it say that. That's why it's important for you to study and for me to study and see it with our own eyes what is in the scriptures. Uh, this is not a day and time where we can take for granted or just trust what somebody says. I like what Ronald Reagan, a great president, said, trust but verify. <laughs> okay, but we need to do the same thing. I'm not saying don't trust your teachers and the people around you that uh, God has put in your life. Trust, but verify what's said, because everybody can make a mistake. You need to verify what I say. That's why I want you to get your Bibles, open it up, and sit here with me, you know, with your Bible. Okay? So, I just want to talk about a little something today. I don't think we were going to go too long. Um, but I want to talk about the character of God, because that's what the enemy comes after the character of God. And um, I think sometimes we really make mistakes, you know, and we get a wrong picture of God. Because when we look back in the Garden of Eden, Genesis chapter 2 and 3, particularly 3, the thing that Satan came after with Eve is the first thing he did was attack God's character. He says, did God really say to Eve, did God really say you can't eat of the tree? and this fruit of the tree. Did he really say that? Very first thing that Satan came. And you know what? It's the same devil today. He is an eternal being. He's not omniscient. He's not everywhere. He's not all-knowing. Doesn't know what you're thinking unless he's throwing the thoughts in there. So he's not all that. Okay? But that is what he attacked with Eve. He attacked the character. Did God really say? And then he goes on to say, well, God's withholding something from you. He doesn't want you to have the knowledge of good and evil. Well, as we talked about in a lesson before, of course not. Well, uh, he, evil is painful. <laughs> he would love to have spared us that, but he wanted to give us a choice. And he did. And that's when the fall happened. But what I love is Jesus Christ came and redeemed us from the curse of the law. And all that came with it. The, the redemption is a beautiful thing. And I don't think we get that. But what I want to look at today is about David. You've heard of King David, I hope. David and Goliath, King David, um, Bathsheba and David. Um, David was a very human man. He made mistakes. But you know what? There's nobody else in Scripture that the Lord says... He's a man after my own heart. 
David was a man after God's heart. And that's what we want to be, after God's heart. So get your Bible. I just want to read a little bit of, just kind of reveal a little bit of David's relationship with God and how beautiful it was. He was so humble before God. And what I want to talk about is honesty. Do you know how much God loves honesty? As a matter of fact, uh, when we look at 1 John 1, 9, when we sin, you know, the first, God just wants us to be straight up about it, okay? Honest. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9. You can write that down. Now, see, I can look at you and quote that. Because I've used it all the time. <laughs> We're human. We make mistakes. We sin. We fall short. And the Lord gives us that to cleanse us. But I like that part. He doesn't just forgive us. He will completely cleanse us and get it out of us. So you're never stuck. I don't care what it is you feel trapped in. You are not trapped. The power of God, the name of God, the word of God, the blood of Christ, they are more than enough to get you out of any situation that you're in. You call on the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. You get serious with God and he will rescue you from anything. That's just it. He wants you more than you want him. He wants a relationship with you more than you want a relationship with him. He created you to be his child, his family his son, his daughter. He made you for that purpose. And we miss it. It's not all about do's and don'ts. Yes, they're in there. But they're in there for the reason of taking away anything that stands between us and our Lord. It's such a love relationship. Go to Psalm 51. I want to read a little bit. I love how honest David was with God. Psalm 51 verse 1. Now this Psalm was written after David fell with Bathsheba. He had an affair with Bathsheba. And if, you, if you're not familiar with the story, he sees this beautiful woman on a rooftop bathing. They had, if you've ever been to Israel, they have flat roofs. And back then they had their tubs uh, were on the rooftop. So she was up there bathing and he saw her. And one thing after another, he had his little servants go out and bring her to the, um, the palace king's palace and he he committed adultery with her and not only that he went a few steps further decided he wanted to keep her so he sent her husband to the front lines of war because he knew he would be killed then and he was so not i mean david got himself into a really deep hole but you know what he didn't give up he knew enough about god and the character of God and the loving kindness of God and the long suffering and forgiveness of God he knew that he could still have a relationship with God if he would be honest and humble himself before God throw himself on God's mercy but let me read this is the context of what this scripture is okay it's um Psalm 51 have mercy upon me O God According to your loving kindness. Yeah, I do need these. <laughs> According to the multitude of your tender mercies. See how David already, let's read that again. He's approaching God after having committed adultery and killing her husband. Have mercy upon me, O God. According to your loving kindness. According to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me I think that is so important he's like I'm not hiding anything from you God I acknowledge my transgression I acknowledge my sins I'm laying them all out before you I know you're a loving God I know I can't hide anything from you so it's really stupid for me to even try Hang on, Jill, my little dog. Come here. You gotta meet him. Come here. Okay. Have you ever seen anybody do that? I'm sorry. 
this is Jill. This is Jill's squeaky toy. Okay, so I'm sorry. That's what you hear. Hey, hi. Hi. You'll have to hear my dogs in the background, and there's just not much I can do about it. And he just ran off with a squeaky toy. All right, back to where we are. David is just royally messed up. Ah, I can't stop this thing. Please excuse me. All right, this is my home. You're welcomed into my home. Treats, maybe that'll keep them quiet, all right? All right, David is royally messed up. We'll get right back into it. And we've been there, haven't we? I think in, there's nobody goes through life without sinning and completely blowing it in some way or another. I don't care what kind of family you were raised in. Look, the message today is <laughs> all you have to do to get right with God is be Lay it on the table. Be honest with him. Ask his help to walk away from it. And you know what? God says he cast our sins as far as the east is from the west. He won't bring it up to you. You don't have to, like, mourn over that forever. Okay? He says, as far as the east is from the west, so far have I cast your sins from you. But let me go back. This is what David already knew about God. Have mercy, O God, according to your loving kindness. He got that about God. He knew God was loving and kind. According to the multitude of your tender mercies, he knew that about God. Blot out my transgression. Now, when David was alive, they had to sacrifice things for their sins. Thank goodness we have Jesus Christ. He is the final sacrifice. That's why they call him a sacrificial lamb. In Hebrew times, when they would commit sins, they would have to sacrifice doves or bulls or goats or something and burn them on an altar before the Lord. And Jesus came to put an end to that system. He is the final lamb. Have you ever heard of God called the Lamb of God and wondered why? That's why. He is the final sacrifice. He sacrificed himself on the cross. He gave himself for our sins. He is the Lamb of God. He did it once and for all. Never has to be done again. Now, we know the book of Revelation says the Jews, the unbelieving Jews that don't believe that Jesus is Messiah, they will do sacrifices again. But you know what? It's unnecessary. Okay? Jesus Christ, the Messiah, was the final sacrifice. And he ended that. Okay? For, uh, for those that believe. All right? Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions. See there? I acknowledge my transgressions. He just spits it out, admits it. He admits his transgressions. And my sin is always before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. And he, he goes on and says a lot more things. Um, but what I love is um, 51, I, I'm sorry, Psalm 51, verse 10. He prays this prayer, and it's so beautiful. And we all need to be praying this prayer. I pray this prayer from time to time, whether I can see anything or not. Because so many times we get into little things we don't even know. We're making mistakes, and we don't even know. It's innocent. We don't know. But why stay in something that's going to harm you, okay? He says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Some translations say steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of my salvation. Have you lost your joy? Pray, ask, receive. And uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners to be converted unto you. Sometimes when we lose our joy, when things are going wrong, when we're in depression, there's sin there. And we, not, we may not even know what it is, you know? I know there's been times where God has floored me when he's shown the light on something. I'm like, Lord, I did not even know I was doing that, you know? I might be in worry and fear and walking around for days, almost to the point of depression. And it's like, what am I doing? I'm not guarding my thoughts, you know? There's a scripture that says, you know, let the meditation of my heart 
The words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O God. You know, we have to pay attention to what we're meditating on. We're responsible for the thoughts in our head. Okay, we can't always stop them coming in, but we can stop them from like what I like my Bible teacher used to say, you can't stop a bird from flying over your head, but you can stop them from nesting in your hair. That's like thoughts. We get thoughts from all over the place, everywhere we're bombarded. But we are responsible as to whether they stay in there and grow and take root or we cast them down. Okay? So I found this beautiful scripture this morning. I'm in love with it. I'm going to memorize this thing. Turn with me to Psalm 19 and 12. I'm going to need to put glasses on here for this. Psalm 19. I love this. I'm going to start with verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. And when we say the law, I mean the word of God. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant, this is David speaking, your servant is warned, and keeping them there is a great reward. Now he's just talking about the word of God. He's, he's just in love with the word of God. But listen to what he says. I love this. Love it. Who can, I gotta take these off. Who can understand his errors? This is my new prayer. Who can understand his errors? There are so many things that can be going on in our life that we don't see. We get blindsided. Who can understand his errors? And this is his prayer. Cleanse me from my secret faults, oh God. Man, see, there's a trust there with David and God. Cleanse me from my secret faults. And there's stuff I don't even know. There's stuff I've had God say, hey, <laughs> what have you been thinking on? The other times when I've been worrying or fear or entertaining this or that or, you know, maybe entertaining an accusation about somebody that, you know, I don't know if that's true or not. You know, we've got to guard our thought life and be the caretakers and guardians of what goes in and out. But he'll help. But I love this. Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Now, what does presumptuous mean? I don't have my note out here. Presumptuous is being a boldness or presuming or being like out of boundaries. Like, am I out of boundaries somewhere? Am I being presumptuous in what I'm thinking or doing or my decisions? Am I out of um, accurate and appropriate boundaries? Um, and sometimes we don't even know what our boundaries are. That's why we've got to pray. The Word of God is always our boundaries. But sometimes we don't even see that we are living outside of that. Let not them have dominion over me. Let not presumptuous sin have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent of great transgressions. It's just so cool to me that David trusted God so much that he would just lay himself bare. And say, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. And he would say other prayers in the Psalms, you know, search me and see if there be any wicked way in me. I used to be afraid to pray that. Search me and see if there are any wicked way in me. Because I didn't want to know. <laughs> but when I became to know the Lord and how awesome he is and how close I want to be to him, how loving he and close he wants to be to me and to you when you understand that. You want everything out of the way. You don't want anything to be standing between you and your God, you and your creator, you and the one that has this incredible plan and destiny for your life, that has love unspeakable and joy and peace for you. Everyone he created, he has this incredible, unique purpose and plan for. And when you really understand that about God, God is love, but he also has boundaries, okay? It's like any good parent. If you raise your kids, you have some boundaries. 
Don't go in the street. Don't step out in front of traffic, you know? It's for their good. You don't want your kids to get hurt and killed. Don't run with the knife. Don't put your hand on a hot stove. I mean, these are actually the kind of boundaries that God gives us in the Bible, you know? I mean, when you read the Proverbs and he talks to young men, he's saying, young men, stay, in, stay away from the harlot. Why? Hello? Disease? All kinds of stuff. Ruining of a life and a marriage and a family. God was warning them way back then about adultery because it's destructive. Destructive. And, and when we get destroyed, we hurt. And the God that loves us hurts for us. But you see, he gave us free will. So there's a point where he stands back and he won't control us because he wants it to be our choice. He'll let us choose things. He'll let us walk into things that he knows are going to hurt us. But don't you ever think he's not weeping when we make the wrong choice and go the wrong direction. He weeps because he sees the end from the beginning, the beginning from the end. He already knows what our choice down that path is going to cause us, the pain it's going to cause us. Now, he can get us out, but there's a point in time where you reap what you sow. He can shorten that. He can deliver from a lot of that, but there are just sometimes consequences when, you know, if you get somebody pregnant out of wedlock and, you know, there's going to be a baby, <laughs> unless you want to commit uh, murder. So there are consequences. God would rather us not ever feel. And if you have ever had an abortion, I'll say straight up, that is not the unpardonable sin. God will forgive you. As a matter of fact, he wants to forgive you. He wants you to take that, lay it before him, and be honest. Lord, I did this. Please forgive me of that. That's what he's wanting, honesty. And he will forgive you. And you know what? He will take that. And he will throw it away. And when he looks at you, he doesn't look at you that way. You're not the daughter that had an abortion. Hmm? You're the daughter that has a destiny. A destiny. He doesn't look back. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul says, forgetting those things that are behind and pressing on towards the mark of the high call of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, If we're going to ever fulfill our, our destiny and find our purpose, we can't kick ourselves for the past, cling to the past, or let the past control us. You must let it go. And for those of you, I know I'm, I'm speaking to somebody. If you have had an abortion, I need to tell you that babies go to heaven. You will see that baby again. When you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, repent of your sins, be honest with Him, be straight up about it, don't hide anything from God, and you walk with God, you will end up in heaven. That baby's already there. All babies go to heaven. Why? God is just. And he tells us in his word, babies go to heaven. So don't worry. Okay? He forgives you. Be straight up with him. But he will forgive you. All he's waiting for is your honesty about it. Don't hide it. Don't pretend like it didn't happen. Don't blame shift and blame somebody else. Take responsibility for your part. Give it to God. Let him cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And then put it behind and run your race. You have a destiny. I tell you what, I'm talking to somebody. Sweetheart, that baby is waiting for you in heaven. And he or she does not want you sitting down here mourning over what happened. They're doing great. <laughs> They're in heaven. <laughs> they are in heaven waiting for you. Time doesn't really pass in heaven. There's no, it's outside of time. They're just waiting for you. It's okay. Let it go. It's okay. Let it go. God forgives you. Okay? Get straight up honest. Have that conversation. Lay it on the table. Cry your tears. Don't you ever pick it up again after that. Run the race. 
We all need you run in the race. God wants you run in the race. He wants you to meet your destiny. He wants you to fulfill your purpose. And you can't do that. If you're beating yourself up and kicking yourself or or you're carrying around a dude. See, that's what I'm talking about. When, when I love this prayer, who can understand his errors? Psalm 1912. I'm going to read it again. This is so powerful. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. Sometimes there's things we, we, we may be depressed. We may be carrying a heaviness and a weight. And we don't even know where that came from. That's why I love this prayer. Cleanse me from secret faults. Who can understand his own errors? Sometimes we don't even know. Okay? This is a great prayer. Psalm 19, verse 12. Really encourage you to get your Bible. Find a Bible. Get a Bible. Go online. There's online Bibles. Bible Gateway. Um, I like to use New King James Version. You can find your own, but just... Find, I'm not going to get into versions, but just look up Psalm 19, 12 and pray that over yourself. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. I love that about him too. It's like, I know I'm going to do some stuff again. So Lord just might keep me from those kind of things, making errors, and <laughs> going outside of boundaries and wisdom. Um, let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent of great transgressions. God wants to help us. Some people think he's up there with a bat. No, he's waiting for us to come to him and be honest about our life. Open up this beautiful relationship and get in his word. Particularly read Psalms and Proverbs. Read the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. If you don't know where to start. Read the scriptures. These are our boundaries. This is our safety net. It's not a bad thing. You know, you may have been really given a rotten idea of God in the Bible. And I tell you what, television slams Christianity at every turn. Hmm? And it's subtle. You may not even be aware that you have a subtle thing against God and against the Word of God. Now, we've all met Christians that have heard us, okay? That, because, why? Why? The devil wants to keep us away from the Word. He wants to keep us away from good churches. He wants to keep us away from studying and talking to God and wanting to be close to God. Well, how does he do that? Satan's way that he works is deception. Oh, it can be so subtle. Oh, yeah. I tell you, almost every sitcom on TV, I just, I don't watch them, but I flip through every now and then, and I'll catch a clip of it. It is so anti-Christ, anti-Christian. Little subtle remarks, little subtle. And even your most favorite show can be planting little subtle seeds. Yeah, yeah. And before long, you, you have an attitude you don't even know that you have. That's why we need to be praying, being honest with God. And I be beg you, a beloved Get this prayer. Begin to pray it over yourself if you've never done that. Jesus loves you so much. So, Father, I'm going to pray for you right now. Again, Psalm 1912. I'm going to read it again. Well, I, let's just pray. Father, we just come to you with an honest heart today, admitting we don't even know our own errors. We can't even see our own the secret faults. We're... We are so caught up in this busy world, Father, that we can't even see things and we need your help. But I ask you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Father, and to bring us to that place where there is nothing between you and I, there's nothing between the person sitting in front of me and you, that there's that closeness that was always meant to be, that beautiful relationship that was always meant to be. Lord, there's subtle things that have crept in. We didn't even see it. Lord, I know, you know, we didn't even know it was there. We might have been raised with it. We might have heard it just over and over. The whole world bombards antichrist thoughts, and we don't even know that's what they are. Anything that keeps us from you and from Jesus Christ is of the world and in many ways against Christ. Help us be wise. Grow us this week in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. 
You have a good week. I hope that you will look that up. Again, Psalm 19, verse 12, and pray it. Get alone with God and pursue your intimacy with God. He loves you. You have a destiny. You have a destiny. I'll talk to you next time. This is Jean Shambly Thomas signing off with Passing the Torch. God bless you.